Welcome back to EM All Access. Today we're sitting down with a truly iconic American brand, McDonald's. McDonald's brings together 15,000 of its operators every two years for its worldwide convention. And recently the brand amped up its on-site experience with digital tools that are fun, engaging, and complement the show. Engagement project manager Lisa Fingerhut and her team were the architects of the digital strategy that brought the attendee experience to life. I visited McDonald's headquarters outside of Chicago to have a chat with her about how their last event went and what they'll do next time. Let's listen in. Lisa, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. We're out here at like the headquarters of McDonald's. We are. That's really exciting. It you know, is. I, I, love I grew it. up with the McDonald's brand and I think it's it's really neat to, to be here and um, it's such an iconic brand to it work is. for. It's a great brand to work for. I love it every day. I really love my job. And when you have a brand like that, obviously managing the message is really important. You put on a big event where you bring people together to learn and talk about it every year. Um, tell me about the event itself. Well, so actually our worldwide convention is our global owner operator convention. So our franchisees from all over the world. This year specifically, we had over 93 countries represented. So that's really major and really exciting. So I know that digital tools were really important for you, for your international event. Um, let me start there. And how many people are not able to come? That w What would be the entire audience like oh my if you gosh. brought everybody? Wow. It's probably much, okay, much so larger, right? 35,000 restaurants, 120 countries, and you've got a huge number of attendees yeah. globally, potentially. So there, there becomes the challenge. How do you reach out to those people yeah. and make them feel included yeah. and have them understand the message, all those kinds of things? Right. So what was your approach? So it's a fantastic opportunity, and we really ramped up the digital this time around. And, you know, every two years, of course, with technology advancing, and it, it really broadens that scope. So this year we did that big time. Um, we really wanted to provide, like you said, the message is important. We have four global sessions, and each of them have, you know, very important leadership messages, as well as messages from owner-operators from different markets and from leadership from those markets. So it really gave us the opportunity by leveraging our virtual tools to extend it to our virtual audience. And we really saw a big payoff there. We have um, a great partner, which is Kindle Communications, and they're very involved in our, um, our sessions on site and developing the messaging of the convention. So they have a digital arm, and it was a very natural for us for the first time to really leverage that digital arm. And it created this great collaboration and, you know, great alignment of all the messaging. So uh, with Kindle, we developed our own kind of homegrown social network. Um, we created a website that was um, Facebook-like. Can I say that? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you know, so we had, um, you know, the ability to, to, to be very nimble and to post stories uh, and, and really kind of be spontaneous about the type of uh, stories we posted. We had a lot of crowdsourced material as well. And so we reached out to our attendees, both our attendees and our non-attendees, to try to get the conversation started and really have them, you know, really share their thoughts about some of the messaging that they were going to be seeing at convention. They're so excited to be there. You know, they, they love being intimate, up close and personal with our leadership. So whenever there's a photo op, there they are. Tell me about this, you call it social mosaic. Yeah, have yeah. you ever heard of the social mosaic? No. So, well, we, we, we used a company called Mass Relevance and that was you know, a, a feature that really Kindle brought to us. They're a social media aggregator. And they're a fantastic company and there's all kinds of filtering tools. If we wanted to really focus on a specific topic, like coffee, we would bring in conversations that were happening on Facebook Twitter, Instagram, and Vine. How did the experience go for your attendees? What did they say about the digital experience? Were they happy about it? We were so excited about how happy they were about it. Good. We tried to kind of leverage our folks from within to support the initiative, um, as well as our agency partners. So, but they were, you know, suggesting of how many folks that they thought we needed on staff to support this closed social network. And I was like, there's no way. You know, we don't even know if this is going to fly. We don't even know where we're going to get, you know, 30 posts, 300 posts. 
we were so busy. And, you know, I keep saying, I don't know if we need you guys. Well, we were busy, you know, 24-7, yeah. just keeping up with the, you know, keeping up with the closed social network and the activity, you know, with our, with our website, which we kept active for, you know, the non-attendees during the event. So you, you saw the positive response, but was there, were there other ways that you measure your success and kind of looked at this whole project? And Sure. Well, we had great analytics. And um, one of the other tools that we used, I mentioned that Kindle brought to the table mass relevance. Well, they also introduced us to Urban Airship, which is push notifications. So that was that uh, push notification tool. So we thought, you know, let's see how it goes. Are attendees going to want to look at messages that we push out? Are they going to be annoyed with messages? You know, we just couldn't get a, get a good sense of it at all. Well, you know, we started with our first, first push notification. And as I said, we have some pretty big name celebrities there. And we asked them, would you mind, you know, putting out a message? We want to send a message every morning, you know, different. So the first time we had crazy response now think about this this is our app which we only the attendees had you know access to the app and the closed social network so only the attendees got the push notifications the first no push notification we sent out before the convention even started we had over 30,000 views that's great <laughs> so we were like okay people you know, are using this people are using yep. this what do we do next mm -hmm. And you know, and did it continue? It, it didn't. Wasn't the first one. It continued. One. Yeah. Oh, it was great. like crazy. So we started having a really, really good time with it. Yeah. And this is where you know it got really exciting. Where we'd have meetings every day in the morning and the night, and say, well, "What are we going to do tonight? What are we going to do tomorrow?" And it just kept getting bigger and better. And so we were really excited that, you know, obviously that our tactics were working, our strategies were working, but that our you know our intention was to and relevant, fun, engaging messaging and to our attendees, and it really worked. As you just heard, the digital team behind McDonald's Worldwide Convention was busy 24-7 keeping up with the action. They created a thriving hub to drive communication on site at their event. And with over 160,000 messages pushed out to an internal event network, it was clear that attendees were consuming those messages and participating in the conversations. What's important here is that these digital tools first supplemented and then became a valuable part of the live attendee experience that helped them navigate a large event and ultimately feel more connected to their fellow operators and the McDonald's brand. My thanks to Lisa for talking to me today, and I hope that you'll come back and join us again for another episode of the show for event marketers, EM All Access. See you soon.